What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Redonkulous Gaming. Today we're going to show off Vengeance Demon Hunter gameplay if you were to choose the Night Fey Covenant. Uh, the Night Fey Covenant comes with an ability that is rather unique, um, but not necessarily unique from a Demon Hunter perspective. So this gives you yet another charge or another mobility uh, ability, and what it's going to do is let you charge a single target, strike them for a percentage of attack power in the form of nature damage. This is also going to root them in place for three seconds, and it's going to inflict a percentage of attack power over time in the form of a dot. The other thing that this will do is it'll put a debuff on your enemy. And as long as that enemy lives, as long as they live for the full duration and the debuff lasts one minute, it's going to increase the overall healing and leech and, and really everything that you, you get by hitting that target. Um, so it's something that is going to take an already strong self-healing class in Demon Hunter, and it's going to make it even stronger. Now, I went ahead and paired this ability with Suffuse's Proclamation for a number of reasons. First of all, every time you cast the hunt and you get a root effect, you're going to activate Suffuse's Proclamation. Uh, the reason being is that anytime you stun, anytime you apply a loss of control effect, anytime you interrupt, anytime you dispel, you're going to get a secondary stat buff for 15 total seconds. So these two synergize pretty darn well, and on top of that, you get 10% um, reduction to any loss of control effects that you may run into. So we're going to go ahead and jump into a dungeon, and we're going to start to demo this thing. All right, nearly an hour later. Yes, an hour-long queue time as a tank. Uh, we are in the mists of Tirna Scythe. So again, we're testing out the hunt in conjunction with Suffuse's Proclamation. And as always, I've got my spells uh, on a pull to pull basis so you can see exactly what the damage table looks like. I'm going to go ahead and cast the hunt here. And I am running the leech build, so I don't have fracture going. Now one thing you just saw is that fell devastation is now baseline, it's not anything that you have to talent into. Uh, and that makes everything feel a lot less choppy. You have more buttons to push, that's a good thing. There wasn't a whole lot of unpruning they could do for a demon hunter, uh, so... In that regard, it's a it's a good thing. Another button to push. Um, this is a lot less overwhelming than a lot of the other tanks in terms of uh, the unpruning or depruning process that Blizzard went through. And essentially every time I can stun, any time I can interrupt, I'm going to do that, like right there, so that I get my Suffuse's Proclamation, and I can take advantage of that. I also get 15% extra leech when I'm in demon form, so the fell devastation I just did essentially just healed me to full. Now the one ability I have not talked about, and it's very much on purpose because I just have not seen the, the value of it uh, to this point, is um, Soul Shape. As a Demon Hunter, again, it's it's another mobility skill. Uh, it gives you the instant teleportation. It's really something that you, you probably won't find yourself using a whole lot. Um, but it's it's on my bars, I can say that much about it. But that is uh, cross, uh, cross class, every class has access to that. I'm going to go ahead and do the hunt here on this big guy. Get our fell devastation off. So you can kind of see where the hunt is landing when I do cast it. It's the one in green here, if you want to watch that meter. 
but Fell Devastation is by far and away uh, a really good feeling skill, so really glad to have that no longer be a talent and something that, that feels like it got a pretty substantial buff overall. Other than that, not a lot of changes as a whole for Demon Hunters. Spell Devastation is really strong, as you can see. I'm hoping it stays that way. Because it certainly gives you a little bit more freedom in the way that you talent. I'm saving the hunt for the boss ball. Just so that I can have advantage, or take advantage of the full minute that it's up. Give everyone a second here. Our healer's falling behind a little bit. Okay. Looks like our healer is struggling a little bit. I'm guessing it's UI issues. But we're going to have to get moving here. There we go. Paladin's moving again, so we can hop into it. So I'm going to go ahead and open up with Wild Hunt and start hopping around immediately. And I'm going to meta, and I'm going to work to get an interrupt here. Looks like I whiffed. That's all right. Get the next one. There we go. So I'm, I'm working to interrupt, I'm working to do everything I can, consume magic, um, just to take advantage of this Fuse's Proclamation. Keep him silenced when he comes out. So essentially, for Demon Hunters, it's pretty easy to take advantage of this Legendary. Um, you'll, you'll find that it's up more often than not. If you do a good job, specifically in dungeons, you can really take advantage of it being up roughly 50% of the time. There's enough stuff to interrupt. There's plenty of stuff to um, consume magic on. Looks like we get a chess piece. All right, here's where it gets complicated for many who have not done this group. Um, this right here is what people refer to as the guessing game. It's not really a guessing game. It's one of these things that are not like the other. Um, so you take a look at all the symbols, and you just try to figure out how they're the same, and then pick the one that is the most different. So... Sounds relatively simple, but people like to rush through this. Uh, this is a maze, and every time you guess wrong, or you go through the wrong portal, you have to start all over. So we look for the pattern. we got a flower, we've got one with a circle around it, and one with a circle around it. So we go through the one that does not... <laughs> uh, let's see, there we go. I guessed wrong there, that's okay. As I talk about how easy it is. Okay, we'll get the hunt off as soon as it's off cooldown. It is a one minute long cooldown, so something to keep in mind. So not incredibly ideal, but at the same time, you're, you're not going to have a need to charge. 
um, as frequently as a demon hunter. Given the fact that you can uh, you can infernal strike, and um, I mean that's that's pretty regularly off cooldown. Okay. So we've got the flower. We've got the leaf. We're going through the leaf. We're going to meta here. And I'm going to go ahead and silence this group. Prox fuses and get my leech going. Help out my healer. If you're watching meters, I'm pretty consistently able to outpace the paladin in terms of healing. Which is what I want when I'm running the leech build. Okay, we're looking for a leaf. Or maybe not. We were looking for the leaf before. Leaf, leaf, and flower. Okay, we're going to get the hunt off. Get your sigils down and get out of that. There we go. And you can see the buff that I'm getting from the legendary right up there. It's up for 15 seconds, and then it can't be activated again for 15 seconds once it falls off. Okay, so we've got a leaf. We've got the flower. And we've got the leaf, so we are going to the flower. I believe, unless these have circles around it. Circle. Circle, okay. So we should be going this way. Should be, theoretically. So this is what I mean. This is the part that can take a while. They are relatively inconsistent right now. So we're going to go this way. Worst case, it gives me a little bit more time on cooldown of, for the hunt. There's our fell devastation again. Which, as I mentioned multiple times, is really great to have as a part of the rotation. Especially running the leech talent. Now that's probably going to change. You're probably going to need to start specking to fracture. Uh, depending on the content that you're doing, but for what I'm doing, it, it works pretty darn well. Leaf, leaf. Flower. Still wrong. This is what happens when you say something's easy. So this time, it actually stuck with the theme of circle, circle, non-circle. So now we need the one with the non-circle. Circle. Still wrong. This is so goofy. This thing has been pretty inconsistent throughout. We'll get through it though. So during the downtime, um, I just want to start to talk a little bit about the three questions that I'm aiming to answer. Um, by by trying these out. Um, nope, not that one. They followed me, and I didn't. I purposely didn't run through it. Uh, so the three questions that I look to answer uh, by doing these videos um, is: How does the ability feel for the class, and specifically to 
tanking. Um, how is the strength of the ability? How is it performing? And what's the overall viability? And let's just get through this. So we got flower with a circle, leaf, and leaf with a circle. I mean, we've tried all three now. We might be stuck here. Um, and then the, the viability question that we look to answer is really that of, is does it make sense um, in more than one type of content? So is it viable outside of just dungeons? Is it viable outside of just raid? Uh, is it something that can also be useful in a PvP setting? Um, and so on. So... This is getting ridiculous. We've tried every portal possible, so we, we may have glitched the dungeon, or the dungeon may have glitched on us. Um, and so I'll start to just kind of address and, and talk about some of these things here. So as of right now, um, it doesn't feel all that good to run as, as a Night Fae with a one-minute cooldown on effectively what is a charge. Um, the charge is kind of clunky. Um, it rushes straight to your target. You have a fairly long range on it, but overall, it's not something that is uh, necessary as, as a part or additive in a way um, that your toolkit already is not. So, given the fact that you already have a lot of mobility, and given the fact that it's performing relatively low in terms of its overall output and throughput, it just does not make a whole lot of sense right now. Uh, to have as a part of what a demon hunter can do as a tank. So, with all that in mind, it's great to see we actually finally made it through that thing. Uh, with that in mind, um, the question of how does it feel when I push this button is it kind of feels unnecessary. And that's the most simple way I can put it. It feels unnecessary, but there are certainly advantages to you know, getting additional healing off of a single target. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So you got flower. Perfect. So now we're finally at boss number two. We're going to head straight into it. Get this thing going. This boss uh, essentially plays the same guessing game. Uh, that we were doing leading up to this point. Although it's a little bit more simple based on the other times I've run this. So you've got circle, circle, non-circle, but then you see all flowers and then you see a leaf. go now as far as the ability strength is concerned I started to allude to it before and I'll get it up right now now that the boss is back is having a minute where if you hit a boss and you're already pretty strong in terms of leech and um, and self-healing and, and just getting that passive heal that much does feel good um, the, we got two circles. Oh, there we go. We got the flower over here. Didn't see that. Now, viability is where I start to to kind of start to scratch my head a little bit in terms of the content that um, I'd be running personally if I were a Vengeance Demon Hunter. And if I'm running this spec, I'm probably aiming towards, you know, Rating PVE uh, more so than anything. I believe it's the flower, but maybe I missed something, yeah. So, if I look at, at how I'd be using the wild hunt, it's really just to, to keep... Jeez really just to keep um, the heal up, the passive buff, because you're not necessarily doing it because 
it ca it's you know doing a ton ton of damage because it's really not, especially once every you know minute or so. And it just came back up again. So despite the fact that we took the long way around with that boss, I was only really able to get it off once, twice if I had casted it earlier. Um, but the healing effects are are relatively low um, on the hunt. Um, you can see that it did 7.7k damage over the course of that time. But again, once a minute doesn't necessarily pan out to amazing throughput. But it does translate into more self-healing. So um, it could find a place maybe down the road as it gets balanced a little bit further. Uh, but we'll see. I think most of the tweaking, um, given the fact that Blizzard came out and stated that they're going to be tweaking Covenant abilities... I think most of that is actually going to come through the conduit system. And for the sake of testing, because all that stuff is subject to change, I am not running any conduits right now. All I'm doing is testing the ability. And uh, with that in mind, I just wanted to, to test the viability of the ability um, without it being buffed up by the conduit system. So um, given the fact that we're less than a month and a half away from release, I wanted to at least be sure that I was keeping everything consistent from a testing perspective. And so that's the way that I decided to do it because most of their tweaks are likely going to come through the conduit system and not to the skills themselves. It just is a little too late at this stage. Uh, Blizzard is very unlikely to overhaul these skills entirely. So there's my reasoning for that. Now, Soul Shape, I have not used once, just to give you an idea. And it's not because I don't want to. I very much want to. It's just because I, I have not had a reason to yet. And and that's just because the class is already highly mobile. So uh, maybe in a raid setting, you'd pop it just for the sake of getting a teleport. Maybe you'd be in a situation where you'd have your leap on cooldown. Maybe you're getting knocked over the edge like I just was. And you can save yourself with Glide. But that Soul Shape wouldn't save you there. Go ahead and get these together. Okay, and we got one more pull and then we're at the boss. Fell Devastation. The healing on Fell Devastation is just fantastic, especially with the extra leech. It's just amazing. Really can bail out your healer. Which, of course, means it's probably a prime candidate for nerfing, but all that being said, I don't know that they can really effectively nerf it all that much at this stage. Um, given the fact that it's really the the best thing that they've added to the toolkit that brings it on par with the rest of the tanks. So we'll give our healer a second to run back. And we'll jump into the last boss. So overall impressions of the Night Fae Covenant are this. It seems to be a utility-oriented covenant, uh, and it, the utility it provides a demon hunter. doesn't matter the spec, but specifically for vengeance is movement, and it's something that we, we already have quite a, quite a bit of. Um, so the need to go Night Fae for Soul Shape is non-existent. The need to go Night Fae for a quick charge in is non-existent. The number one benefit that you're going to get is the one minute increase to your self healing by hitting that target and by beating on that target, and that's really uh, the the most effective thing that you're going to get out of going night fay. Um, other than that, not a whole lot. So let's answer the three questions more affirmatively. 
How does it feel? Not good. It's it's more of an opener. It feels a little awkward to sit there and channel the cast. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and just pull. Because our healer went AFK. But as you can see, it's a cast time to get the hunt off. I just went ahead and did it now. Um, I'm going to get Fell Devastation off early. Since we're without healer. But it just does not feel good to cast. There's There's kind of no point given the fact that our toolkit is already pretty wide and vast to the point where we are getting all the movement-oriented abilities that we need just out of our basic toolkit. Now, the viability of the strength. This, the strength comes from um, the healing. The healing side of it, right? The utility side of it. That would be really the only reason why a Vengeance would potentially need to leverage uh, the Night Fae class, and uh, need is a very strong word. I don't think you'd ever really need to, to leverage this, but if you like the idea of being a Night Fae Demon Hunter, you can get something out of it um, without looking at Soul Vines, and that thing that you're getting is more self-healing. Overall viability, outside of the content that I'm doing right here and now, is relatively low. Uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of wiggle room to leverage Night Fae in a raid setting. As I mentioned, you get all the movement that you need just from your basic toolkit. Uh, you're also not going to um, be channeling a cast like that most likely in a PvP setting because you're not going to have it up when you need it for the most part. So. Um, my my overall reaction is that Night Fae uh, could be appealing, uh, likely will not be appealing, given the fact that your toolkit is already so robust in the area in which the Night Fae Covenant addresses.